Hello my loves, I'm Ellie Frost. Thank you for being here on this channel. We are talking about a spiritual awakening to elevate our consciousness, right? So that we really understand narcissism, true narcissism for what it is, yeah? Break, release all psychic ties, attachments and enmeshments to the cycles and people involved, um, yeah? Including unhealthy behaviors, patterns and programmings, I'm gonna speak slowly, that we've learned. Come into our true authentic power, our sovereignty, so that we're resourced to self of our best lives, right? The best lives we can live now and our health and vitality restored. Everything revived and restored, which is possible for you. Honestly, I'm a living, breathing testament of it is absolutely possible. And so are the people I work with, right? I get very passionate and I do channel. And so sometimes I can speak very fast because I'm in the energy, right? I'm a big activator for energetic change, but like... Thank you for bearing with me because I know <laughs> some of the videos I do speak very fast um, and I'm conscious. So in some of them, I put my hands on my body a lot to ground myself. And I teach you to come into your bodies a lot, right? And as a channel for me, a psychic and someone pretty, you know, connected, like, and, you know, I have to be in both realms. So if I forget to do that, sometimes I'm just, um, just speaking a little bit fast because I'm allowing the message to come through me at the it, it, when you receive messages actually just out of it you know in case you're interested some of you will know this anyway when you get when you we all get creativity downloaded to us but it all comes at once so it's like my words are trying to catch up with my information you know obviously I know this stuff intellectually but I also channel a lot of the transmission for you because it's going to give you the biggest uh, change and that's why working in my containers is very powerful because I'm transmitting I'm, I'm bespoking things right but I will stay grounded because I have some important information for you. So thank you for being here. Please subscribe, please like, please share. Or just, or just being here is, is beautiful, but if you feel inspired to, because it does help my message get out there and I mean it. Like I, I know my work will change people's lives um, and it's the exact things I needed to hear in some of the worst times of my lives that went on repeat. You know, after losing my home and everything once and being severely like back in a cycle that I thought I'd broken from childhood to find myself in the exact same circumstances again and have to have hope with my body breaking down again was just like, I couldn't believe it. You know, how is this happening to me again with everything I know? So wherever you are in this process, you're not stupid. There's nothing wrong with you. You just don't know what you're dealing with. And there's been a lot of missing links. You know, no one could help me heal trauma. I'm an absolute geek. I've studied psychology. I've been in alternative medicine. I'm a healer. I had to find the missing link to what this was, right? Uh, same with the make, breaking the ties. Getting away from a narcissist is not enough. You can leave a narcissist and be psychically um, enmeshed for years afterwards, never fully claiming your sovereign self, right? If you can afford it, come into sovereign. I don't know how long it'll be. I'm, I'm supporting it live in the group, as in the comments until April 17th. I don't know it, how long it'll be open for after that. I don't know what I'll do next. I, I trust my guidance. I haven't got a big strategy ever. I trust what I'm called to do. And I bring the right offerings in that I can support. And that does require, this is all free and I'm doing as much as I can for free, but in a sacred container, there do, it is part of the energetics. There needs to be a mutual investment at various levels of things. And so, yeah, that is um, accessible. It's so affordable compared to what people are doing. To, it's so affordable. Um, I know what it's like to be in financial hardship. I was in chronic financial hardship several times. Um, so I get that and that's why I'm doing as much as I can for free. Um, and for other people who want to do other things with me, I've got stuff that you can, well, haven't got a lot, but you can talk to me about it. So how the narcissist <laughs> destroys your life, where does it all come from? Where does it start? And I would say there's three main kind of pillars, right, that they are from the onset ready to destroy. One is your perception of reality, how the world works and, and particularly how it's going to work for you right? How the universe works, how the world works for you. Two is your perception of yourself. And three is your perception of who and what they are. Come on then. Everyone was asking about my dogs. They've made an appearance today. That we had a bath today. They, sorry guys, this isn't offside. They didn't like baths, but I do like a happy bath day song, like a happy birthday song. So this is one of them. Hi Arch. He's going to be 10 in March. And this is another one, Milo and he's gonna be eight in March, right? I moved them countries with me, they're my soul family, they have been my babies. Of course, narcissists are fret. I had a client out here who was a terrible narcissist and uh, 
you know, she was like, well, we know how to get to you, like threatening my dogs because she was just a celebrity that I refused to work with because she was unethical and trying to lower my costs. And we don't need the backstory, but basically, yeah, we are always, me and these guys, surviving everything, <laughs> every single thing. And I'm pretty protective. And again, it takes me confidence because I I keep my things, that are, these are my most precious things, close to me. So anyway, distorting your perception of uh, reality, yourself and who and what they are. So your perception of reality yeah now the narcissist is going to trigger subconscious survival programs and that's going to keep you in a lot of fear lack and loss basically you're you you've already lost what you thought the relationship was so if you think it's your if it's your parent if it's your partner if it's whoever it is what you thought that dynamic was you're going to be now grieving and trying to resuscitate what you thought the role in your life was that they should play they keep you living in fear Fear of what will happen next, fear of walking on eggshells, because that helps you then, helps them detach you from yourself. They don't want you in your authentic power and truth, which is why sovereignty is great, because you really come home. You come home in a way that, like, when you are fully you, you don't have to work on self-love and self-esteem, it just is. I'm fully me, I'm fully authentic, I haven't got to work on my self-love, I just let myself be me, and everything else is a natural byproduct of that, right? So everyone's doing it the wrong way round, or a long way round a lot of the time. So when you come into authentic power and truth, which is integrity with your values, yourself, your soul, right, what's important to you, and your vision for your life, yeah, then self-esteem is just, it's not even a thing, confidence is not even a thing, it's like, they're just byproducts of you being you. So yeah, sovereign is a great journey on this, healing the trauma and doing that. So your perception of your reality. So you're constantly in fear, you're constantly in loss, and you're believing in lack. Yeah, there's a lack of everything. There's a lack of love. There's a lack of resources. You're always in this... <gasps> like that's the kind of response you know like what's a key ground is so i don't go too fast so what's going to happen next you know you're fearing what's going to happen next the rug keeps getting pulled under your feet like as soon as you go on a good cycle with them then something something goes wrong you, you're always on edge their design is to keep your perception of reality majorly distorted right so you start literally normalizing this way of life living in survival and you, you can't manifest well from there because again when you're very traumatized and living like that one you're not in abundance in any way two your perception of reality is extremely distorted I, I talk to my clients a lot about they program limitation into your mind and because of that right you've got very limited beliefs that you now need to really work on and question because you know the, a lot of the reason apart from all the again biological psychic emotional trauma uh, responses that people don't get away is like they don't think there's anything else for them. They've got such a limited way of thinking now. So many people could break free. So many people could move. They could move out of the whole community. So many people could move jobs, but they've got so, you, you'll have so many reasons why you can't. And it's not to force yourself to do that because there's no point making a huge change, right? That you are not emotionally ready for. If you see the video that says, losing yourself with a narcissist and the emotional crash when you when you leave i get people in their authentic power and strong and energetically strong because if you make a big shift right if you're in immediate danger i mean as i say you're always in danger of a narcissist but like you know if you need to get out you need to get out but getting energetically strong into your sovereignty means that when you're ready you, you're it, the making those big moves is natural going no contact is natural being confident and, and a source to self self-partnered right which is what again what i teach in sovereign is natural doing it to fix the problem when you're not ready <sighs> you're not an energetic match to be able to sustain that situation so you can leave and then you, you'll think what the world you've, you're carrying all your old beliefs you're carrying all your trauma and you'll believe that it doesn't work out for you because you'll probably have a hard time a lot of the time not always sometimes you'll just get to safety and you'll rebuild your life it depends on your individual circumstance but so many people are not as trapped as they think they are have you heard about elephants i don't necessarily i don't agree with elephants being at all in captivity but when they raise ele elephants in captivity they tie like a rope or something, something heavy to their feet. But by the time the elephants mature, right, the rope, I mean, the, the elephant could literally tear that rope off at any point and probably trample, well, definitely trample anyone that was oppressing him or her. But the elephant doesn't. 
because it's being conditioned to believe that it's weighed down, anchored down and trapped. So a lot of you aren't as trapped as you think, but you've got to get energetically strong and, and into yourself first. You don't even know what you want in life. You don't even know that life can be good. You've got very limited, most of the time in these view cycles, ideas of what's available and possible to you. So again, in Sovereign, we go into the realm of possibility, potentiality again, so that you can actually see the truth and start expanding your mind. So that's that. And that's an issue. The second thing is your perception of who you are. You're not who you are. You get shelled out and who, who they need you to be. Talking about my father still gives me the bejeebies. My, he was a very powerful, wealthy man, you know, and like I was scared to say anything. I never said anything against him. But if I told a, a smidgen of what was happening just in my stories or not even in a story, it would be something very light. I'd never say about abuse or anything or his, anything like that. But like, you know, I, I lived in fear the whole time because I still like it still makes me feel like doing this like you know because he was such a bully really and it was pretty covert but I mean he had power and people loved him and I was definitely very very oppressed and I've carried that on so who am I I'm now completely what do you call it like my someone in one of my groups said narc bait that was probably true for me I like that saying because it was absolutely I was total narc bait you know and no one understood narcissism so even though I went to therapy and they said don't talk to him they could tell he was an abuser that no one told me about narcissism I've only recently in the last six years understood that so who I am yeah, my dad used to sit me down and say he had a lot of money, but he'd never give it to anyone. And, and he'd let me know how worthless I was. They love to tell you you don't matter. You don't exist and you don't matter. So he would said to me as a little girl, if you ever get married, I'll never pay for it. Um, basically, that I'd end up with no money, especially if I didn't do everything he said. He'd use everything financial over my head, even though when I started my career, right, my first business, I was doing really well. And that confused him. But anything that ever went wrong in my life, he would let me know how worthless I was. My boyfriend of seven years, he was not a narcissist, cheated on me. He was a nice guy. That was that relationship was due to him. But, you know, my dad would tower over me and say, well, who do you think will ever be with you now? Yeah, my self-esteem, my subconscious is now, if you don't consciously reject stuff, your subconscious accepts it. So he's basically saying to me, you're never going to get me with anyone. You're not worth anything. Over and over again, while tormenting me. So he'd send me like... You know, he used to collect certain things and he'd send me the value, which was hundreds of thousands. He was showing me how much money he could just waste. But he was letting me know he'd never give me any inheritance and never help me. And, you know, just the, the, the most bizarre crap in the world. So it's all psychological warfare. And for someone as sensitive, as empathetic as me, you know, I wasn't someone who rebelled I was someone who accepted it and was just kept trying harder. That was my response, you know, because I'm a very hard worker and I'm always, you know, trying to do my best. So I kept trying harder to be what he needed. I kept trying harder to... I, I accepted that it was something dramatically wrong with me. That's why I wouldn't accept when the therapist was saying both my parents abused me, which they did. But, like, I mean, for probably the first 30 years of my life, I be truly believed absolutely believed even though I'd done personal development by now I'd built a successful career you know I was a success I didn't necessarily feel it but like I'd bought my first apartment like in London in a beautiful place almost well, it was 400,000 pounds at the time right I was 26 or something that's pretty cool right I was pretty cool but like I didn't feel that way I don't even I think there was just something in me that was abundant they couldn't kill but like I still thought there was something massively wrong with me I didn't think, I wouldn't accept my parents were abusive until I told the story of that. To, by the, I, no one would work with me in therapy until I wouldn't talk to my dad, definitely. I wasn't really in contact with my mum then as much, didn't see her as much. But um, no, I never talked to my dad, it's been years. But because um, that's just literally, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if I say one thing, it's going to be the bullets to shoot me with. Like, he, he and yeah there's no relationship then that's the right thing but I should have done that a lot sooner but I wasn't strong I wasn't strong I wasn't strong enough and when I did do it I wasn't energetically I mean I did do it when I did do it but it wasn't the end you know when I first got contact with my father there was a lot of healing I didn't know about and the therapist didn't know about I stopped working with the therapist I focused on personal development and growth got into other narcissistic abusive cycles and then understood what I know now, which clears the whole thing. It clears the whole thing, what I'm talking about fast. That's what's so extraordinary to me. Gosh, if I'd have known this, the things I teach you, even like just in Sovereign, like that's enough. You know, that's six weeks, six modules. You do it in your own time, self-paced, but like that's enough. That's extraordinary to me. 
I could not solve PTSD. I could not solve why I couldn't let these things go. I couldn't let it go with my dad. I couldn't let it go. I kept thinking one day he'll forget it. One day he'll get old and he'll feel sorry that what he's done to me. One day he'll want a relationship because that's all I wanted was to be loved by him. That's all I wanted for both of my parents. That wasn't healthy, but that's how I felt. I didn't see the truth. No one, no, no one was putting these pieces together. And then when I got them, I literally broke all the chains. I got them at a, a terrible point in my life, to be honest. Like I was, had nothing. I'd lost everything again, but now I understood. And the healing I did was rapid. I, it, it was, I mean, I was traumatized, but I was traumatized again. Believe me, I couldn't believe it when I got PTSD like really chronically for the second time and went through another cycle of absolute brutality. I couldn't believe it. It was after the covert malignant narcissist partner I had I did not see that coming and it was and I just rebuilt my life and it had been such a struggle he'd watched me build it from the bottom up did not help me at all no joint vision like he was so selfish really and I was so generous everything I had I shared he had a lot more than me at the time not now I, I will out <laughs> abundance yeah you know, my abundance is going to be divine because that's right and true you know what I mean and I'm going to do great things with it but that's why, honestly, like you want to get yourself healed and you, you want to go. I have always taught people for years how to make money doing what they love, being who they are. Right. And um, kind of ironic because I never thought I would be focusing on this so much. But this seems to be the most important thing. But the beauty of that is I can take people there, too. And when you do that and, you, you know, money with people with good intentions on the planet do great things with money. Right. So if you're an empath and you're someone who's good, honestly, it's worth just <laughs> losing some of the limiting beliefs we have about money. Not all ri rich people are not bad. Money is an amplifier. If you're a shitty person, you'll do more shitty things with money. If you're a good person, you'll do more good things. Right. It's just that we've had an imbalance on the planet. So people have decided that people with money, it, money turns people bad. It doesn't. If you're great, I'm great with money. I'm more, I'm even more generous. I, I can't help myself anyway, even when I've got hardly anything. So like you will do great things. Imagine the businesses you'll build or the charities you'll give to. We've got to lose these paradigms, right? They've come from faulty thinking and a faulty consciousness. And actually wealth in the right hands changes the world, changes the world. So that's another thing we'll talk about at another point. And the third thing is your perception of who and what they are. Right. No matter what their parents did to me, I would think they loved me. No matter what my ex-partner did to me, I would think he loves me because they do everything because they love you. All the abuse is because they just feel so strongly for you or because there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Your perception of who and what they are. They are the and I teach this in Southern as well. There is a, there are some core unmet needs in us from a child. The narcissist knows what your core unmet need is and they are the source of it. Whether that's love, validation, security, it's normally survival related, whether it's to feel sexy, passionate, intimate, they know your core unmet needs and they, they give you the illusion they're the source of it. And for some of the love bombing stage, right, and in the intermittent stages when they re-love bomb you, you'll feel that unmet need getting met. So you are sold on that lie and they are the source of your unmet lead, right? So in my work, we literally... <sighs> self-source the kill the, the met the unmet needs the unmet needs you had as a child so now you're not vulnerable to them i don't teach people to just go around the world with great strategies for dealing with narcissists i teach them to come into their authentic power i'll talk slowly sovereign and truth so that they are immune to them that narcissists don't come anywhere near them and they build beautiful lives because you can't love and give and do the great things you were born to and you still can no matter how sick you feel no matter what's happened to you i promise you you should have seen me that like i've been hit by a poltergeist the way my body was degenerating it was unbelievable you can't do that if you're playing with them. They're only going to subtract from your life. There's nothing they generate. They just <laughs> diminish. So we, there's no reason to deal with them, but that may take a process. Even if you believe that in your job, I understand where you are. I know what fixed thinking, the number one thing, they distort your perception of reality. I know that fixed thinking, but it's part of the disease. They contaminate your brain, your perception of reality, what you can do, be and have, your perception of yourself, right? Who you are, your worth, your value, what, who, they just take you away from yourself. You have to shell out to be with them. You can't be authentic around them because it's, one, well, it's probably dangerous. You know, they've got no room for it and they don't want you in authenticity and power and sovereignty. And three, who and what you think they are. The biggest joke. The biggest joke is that they're a demon. Yeah. 
They're not your saviour. They're not your source. They're not your lover. They don't love you. They can't love you. They have no respect for you whatsoever. They laugh in your face at your distress. Demonic. Ha. Huh. That makes sense. I wish the therapist had told me that. He didn't know. The therapist was great that I worked with, but I mean, they don't know. They don't know. They want you sitting in therapy, talking and talking and talking and talking for years, and nothing gets done because you're not energetically transmuting the energy. You're not breaking it psychically. You're not coming into a spiritual awakening and your sovereign power and truth. So if you want to do that, join Sovereign and keep watching if that's not something you want to do right now. Keep watching, keep watching. Thank you so much for being here. Lots of love, guys. I'll speak to you soon.